Hi there, Mike Roy here on the vCloud Air team with another installment of how we can do development and testing on vCloud Air. We'll be doing a series of these where we can show you how you can do things like upgrade existing applications, test new applications, and today what we're going to look at is how we can get started with container technology using Project Photon in vCloud Air. So first thing I'm going to do is, you know, when we talk about this in the context of development and testing, I want to kind of show this from two angles. So we'll look at it from the angle of a developer on a local machine, and then we'll also look at it from the role of like an administrator or an ops in IT. Um, so really kind of the marriage of development and operations. Um, and this is where Project Photon really kind of shines. So Project Photon is great because it allows developers to kind of use the tools that they like, which is container-based technology and integrated automation with source code management and things like that. And operations gets to standardize on the same technology that they've standardized for a while, which is the virtual machine. So having this operating system in a virtual machine that's designed by VMware, built to run inside of the VMware environment, whether it's on-prem running Fusion or whether that's in the cloud running inside of vCloud Air, the idea is you get that portability, that consistency, and that same experience uh, from the developer's perspective and from the operations perspective. So let's get a look real quick on how we can get started running that in Fusion, and we'll show how I can basically take an application that I've developed. You know, in this case, we're just using a test kind of an application. It's just, you know, not, a, not nothing really fancy, but the idea is we'll deploy it locally, we'll make some changes, and then we'll push those changes up to our cloud environment. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to need to do is install Photon. We can get Photon actually just from GitHub. If you go over to uh, vmware.github.io forward slash photon, um, or you of course just Google VMware Photon, you'll find that we have this great page here with all the links that you need to grab the both documentation as well as the binaries themselves. So the ISO, you know, is here. It's uh, hosted over on bin tray, and uh, and the nice thing is we can actually pull that ISO from anywhere. It's public, so we don't need to log in or authenticate. It's all open. Uh, so we got a lot of great um, abilities to do that and automate the deployment of the actual ISO um, because it's public. So in this case, you know, we're going to look at doing Project uh, Photon on Fusion, and we're also going to take a look at doing Photon on vCloud Air. So let's get started with Fusion. So what we'll do is we'll add a new VM, and it's pretty straightforward. All we're really going to do is point the ISO at it and then choose our install options. But there is a few things that we have to kind of take into account when we're deploying it in Fusion, and we'll go through that. So we'll find a bit disk image. I've got it on my f downloads folder here somewhere. Let's find it. There we go. And let's install. So what we have to do is we have to choose Linux. And this, we use other Linux 3x 64-bit kernel. So we go OK. And we're going to actually also customize these settings. So we'll save it in my documents virtual machines folder as photon demo. And we'll save. Okay, so now we get the configuration options to manage the virtual machine settings. I'm gonna give it a little more RAM um, just because so we'll do 1024. And uh, there's a few things that we definitely have to take into account here. So you know we don't need things like a sound card, so we can remove that. Uh, we don't need USB or Bluetooth, so we don't need to share devices. Uh, we don't need to really worry about the compatibility, so we don't need to do any of that. We can actually just remove the USB controller entirely. We can also do that for the printer. We don't need the printer. We'll remove the printer port. And the CD drive, we definitely need that because we have to connect the ISO. But everything else should be good to go. Uh, what we won't worry about is dealing with uh, enabling drag and drop, enabling copy paste. Uh, and we're not going to encrypt it, things like that. Uh, as for the display, we don't need to worry about accelerating graphics, so don't select any options there. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. We're good to go now. So what we can do is we can go ahead and fire this up and get the installation started. So the nice thing is, is this installs real fast. So we'll show you this in, in, in a blazing kind of a pace here. So we're up at the license agreement. So here's actually a, a spot that I noticed when I was going through is when you actually select this option, it does a bunch of background tasks. So what happens is if you hit enter, like I do now, it says, yes, I'll erase the entire disk. So it's kind of stuck here. It actually is doing something. I find on some slower systems that what happens is if you hit enter, sometimes you hit enter again, it takes the enter from this screen, which is where you would want to choose your actual installation type, whether it's a full, a minimal, or a micro instance. 
So kind of the difference is basically you're going to have more tools inside of the VM. So the full, the full OS is going to have all of your text editors, the deployment environments, things like that, like the Docker runtime and all that other stuff. Uh, the micro is something where you can actually, it's just got the runtime, so none of the extra added tools, things like that. Um, and you can also customize that, I kind of do a package by package selection. We're going to just do all in, and we'll call this mic photon. Let's go O2. Give it a root password here, and away we go. So we're installing, copying over our uh, RPMs, and uh, that's not going to take very long at all. We'll speed up the process here, but you'll see the elapsed time in the, uh, the window here. You can see 49 seconds, it's not bad at all. So what we'll do is we can go ahead and hit a key and boot. And our OS is starting up. Okay, so we're up, quick and easy. Use the root password that we just created and we're good to go here. So there's definitely some a couple things that we're gonna need to do. Um, once we're started here, we're going to need to basically define, in this case, we're going to show Docker as the example. So we're going to have to use system control to start it and to enable it so that it always starts every time we run this virtual machine. So we'll do system, system control start Docker. That's started. So we'll do system control enable Docker. So it creates our sim link. And now if we want to actually just go ahead and test something, so let's take a look at that. So we go docker, run, uh, run it in a daemon, the port will use 8080, and we're going to pull down an application from the web actually. So we'll do VMware cloud native apps forward slash nginx. So it discovers that it's not local, the image it doesn't have it, so it's going to pull that down from the repository. Now this is great because you could integrate this with like a repository that's running on-prem, uh, maybe you've got some source code management systems like Git or GitLab, um, and you can automate a lot of these things. So when you're doing these like Docker run commands, you can include that in like scripts for things like um, uh, Ansible or Chef or Puppet to basically allow you to automate the installation of applications. So once the developer basically does this thing, he checks in his code, you know, IIT and Ops can have a, a, a development a deployment script that pulls that source code, pushes it through a series of other applications that do testing, that do automated deployment and things like that to really kind of give you this automated end-to-end -end experience. And it's great because developers get to keep using the tools that they know. IT and ops really, from an operational perspective, is managing the virtual machines. And then the deployment is all kind of scripted, so you can really have a lot more control over that. So here we are, we're ready to go. And let's just take a look. What's our IP address here? So we've got... Uh, 176. Let's just bring up a browser and, and take a look. So we've got 172. Uh, 176. There we go. You can see we've got our Nginx demo here. It's running, nice application, running locally, and uh, you know, no big deal. We're good to go here. So that's local. Let's see what we can do with running it in the cloud. So what we'll do is we'll come on over to vCloud Air. Let me just bring this up so we can see. And we can see I've actually already deployed uh, my Photon virtual machine running inside of vCloud Air. And, and what I also did was I actually took advantage of this really handy little button right here, which is this connect to internet button. And it automatically goes in and sets up all of my firewall and NAT rules. So making my installation pretty quick, pretty easy uh, from the configuration perspective there. So what we can do is if I take a look at the VM here, we'll bring it up, open up the console. Okay, so we can get logged in here, root, using the password that we had created when we did the install. We're up, so if we can do a quick check, make sure we're on the internet here, we'll do a ping to google.com. Looks like we're good there. So let's take a look at our Docker. Docker PS, so I have already run the system control commands to install Docker to run, it run as a service. Uh, every time we start the virtual machine and I don't have any VMs running right now. So let's go ahead, or any containers, let's go ahead and install a container. So we'll do docker run 
we'll do as a daemon, the port will specify is 80 to 80. So this specifies the container port to the host OS port. So what I could do is you can have a web server running on port 80 in the container default. Uh, that maps to a different port on the host OS, so maybe 1234. And then what you can do is you can actually map in the edge gateway inside of eCloud Air port 80 from the public IP address to that port 1234. So you end up with this kind of like multi-layer of NAT. Uh, but it's great because you get a lot more control. So I can take a bunch of uh, Docker containers and run them all on the same host OS, have all different IP addresses, uh, and just map them to different services, uh, different ports inside of the host OS. So you know you could run three different things all in the container world. They're running on port 80. They're running all in different ports in the host OS. And at the, out, at the network, they all have different IP addresses that map to those uh, port 80 to those whatever IP addresses inside of this one single virtual machine. So we'll do, so to keep looking here, we'll run the VMware CNA forward slash engine X. And it, you know, same thing back home. Uh, it's gonna check the repository, notices it doesn't have it locally. It's gonna go ahead and download it from Docker Hub and uh, it's gonna deploy this for us right here. It should be pretty quick. Okay, so the image is run. So if we do a Docker PS, we should see that, hey, this is running now. And we can see it's running, mapping the ports and how long it's been up, et cetera. Uh, so what we can do actually is just to, to give you a look here, we uh, modified the gateway to make sure that the uh, ports would forward right back to the right virtual machine that we've got here. So the virtual machine's IP address is dot 103, or sorry, 102. Um, so what we did was we mapped port 80 on the external IP address to port 80 inside of the VM on uh, IP address number two here. Everything is coming out from here, looking like it's coming from that IP address. That's our source net rule. And then we enabled some firewall rules to basically open up port 80 and to allow traffic through. So what we'll do is we've got that there. Let's take a look at our public IP. And we'll make a copy. And we'll bring that up over here. Paste and go. Bam. So here we go. So the cool thing is, is I can now, you know, from my developer desktop, I could go in, make changes to this application, do a push that'll send it to the repository. Whether that repository is running on prem or inside a Docker Hub, you've got some options there. Um, you know, there's a Docker Hub Enterprise that they release, which you can run that all entirely locally. Uh, and have that kind of as a you know Docker Hub inside of your environment, you know that way you can keep all of your uh, containers and all of your applications kind of in a non-public space. Of course, on Docker Hub you can have private repositories as well, so you get a lot more option there. But ultimately, you know, I could as a developer, I make the changes, I push them to my Docker, I commit them, I commit them to my Docker image, I push that Docker image to the cloud, and then I can go into the cloud and I can pull down that updated version of that Docker image all pretty quick, pretty easily. And uh, the consistency here is that we have Photon facilitating all of that. So because we have this standardized base OS template that we can move around between environments, we can use vCloud Connector to migrate it back and forth. We can automate that with deployment scripts using things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, um, et cetera. It really opens up this whole new world uh, for getting started with development and operations. This DevOps kind of a world where the development teams and the operation teams you know, they work together instead of kind of completely different, completely separate. So this is great. Um, you know, that's what we have to show for you today. I really appreciate the time today. Again, this is another installment in our how to do development and testing inside of vCloud Air. And this is how we can do net new native applications building uh, using things like container technology, all built on Project Photon. So for more, come on over to vcloud.vmware.com and take a look at the more that you can do with development and test inside of this environment. And thanks for watching today. Again, my name is Mike. Have yourself a good one. We'll see you again next time.